hey good morning friends so it's brian and we're new air conditioning videos today so i ordered a aciq system which is a private label um hybrid split made by medea let me answer my phone i'll be right back all right so i'm going to unbox this uh but this is a three ton hybrid split so it is a mini split style condenser with a, and it's an inverter unit so it'll be uh more efficient it's rated for 16.9 sear but i expect it to be a lot more efficient than the good for nothing man system i'll uh, shoot a separate video and tell you what died on my good for nothing man system and yes i'm calling a goodman a good for nothing man system um you know they use the same parts anyway i'll talk about that in the video uh, other video so um at any rate, I've ordered a 5KW heat strip, uh, a air handler, so it's it's sort of a conventional air handler with an exterior uh, mini split compressor heat pump or con uh, condenser heat pump, um, and I'm excited. It's it's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. It looks like it's a tall outside unit. So let's let's get to it. Uh, freight company wasn't too bad. They they did put a little dent in the the waffle wrap. Uh, that's what I'm going to call that stuff. Um, but all said and done, it arrived without any scathing. Oh, now one thing that was kind of cool, um, it had a shock watch. So I want to find out what it takes to make one of these turn red. So there's a shock watch here and you can see it's not white. So ah, it just takes a hit and that turns it red. So obviously it didn't get any shocks. It was in transit. And I've always wondered... What does it take to turn one of those red? Now you know. Anyway, so back to the show. So we're gonna we're gonna unpack it uh, or unwrap it and see what it looks like. And I'm not sure what's more more surprising that that uh, XPO Logistics did not pop the shock watch, or that they put one on there. Um, all this stuff's going to go to recycling, and it'll come back as toilet paper, maybe. Yeah, you know, toilet paper is the new gold. It's hard to find. Oh. Uh, <laughs> This waffle wrap some cool stuff. I mean, it's just neat. Yep, no, no damage on the inside. Whatever. I mean, I've got a couple of pops in the the cardboard but I, I don't think it's an issue i think they could have done a little better job with palletizing it but you know again it it showed up and it's okay so that's i mean that's what freight's all about is just to get it here not to make it uh you know super pretty um Seems like an awfully large box for a 5KW heat strip. We'll see what that's about. All right, in the meanwhile, shit, I don't even know if I can get these boxes off with um, it on the pallet. Because it's going to hit the... All right, I got a couple of them that can come off. Um, and I, yeah, well, whatever. Mm 
Now, I don't know if these really recycle or not, but it's plastic. I'm gonna throw it in the bin and see what happens. It's not my problem. So I, I really think this is the future of air conditioning. Um, and there are several brands out there. All of them uh, appear to be made by Medea. Um, but using an, a traditional air handler in the United States with a mini split style condenser, I think that's where we're headed. Um, it makes a lot of sense. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And I just, I, I think that is the future of this in the United States. Um, so there are some other companies that uh, sell these as private label. Uh, Medea sells it as, as their brand. ACIQ is one such private label. I bought these from HVAC Direct. Um, and uh, just, just a note before any of my armchair critics that are professionals start throwing darts at me, um, in Texas, according to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, who's issue, who, is, who issues HVAC contractor licenses, homeowners are exempt from the licensing requirements. So as long as you have an EPA certification in Texas, you can install your own HVAC equipment. And technically, if the distributors want to sell to you, they can. So I happen to have my EPA 608 and 609, so I'd tell the HVAC folks where to kiss, but I can't really show that on camera. So you just have to figure out what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, and, and quite honestly, if I wanted that license, I could have it. You know, I've repaired refrigeration decks on um, vending machines, ice machines. Uh, yeah, so I, it, you know, those things have charges in like the six ounce range. So if I can repair that, this is a piece of cake. Uh, and honestly, I have the tools for it. I have everything but a recovery cylinder and I don't tend to recover very much. Um, I should but I'm not worried about it. Normally, if I'm working on a system, it has had a leak and the refrigerant has escaped. So we're gonna try and cut this apart. Um, you know, so back to the other companies. Uh, there's another company that's using uh, Medea's equipment and the giveaway is that it says Goldfin. Now, I'm not gonna name that company because the ownership of it is really vindictive. Uh, you will not have to try very hard if you search for a DIY air conditioner. Uh, they'll probably show up, um, but they're they're not exactly what I would call honest and forthright about their advertising. So they they represent one set of performance statistics, but when you start looking into the documentation, the documentation looks very homegrown. Normally, these things have specification sheets that are really pretty pretty specific. Um, and they, they, you know, like I'm used to seeing certain things on, on them from Fujitsu and Medea. So when I don't see them on Podunk HVAC, yeah, that's all I can say about them. Um, it, it just, to me, it's a red flag. And then if you call them and ask them where it's made, they're gonna tell you it's made in the United States. And you know, when you start digging, you'll find out it's really not made in the United States. But you gotta ask them that three or four times because they're gonna lie to you and tell you it's made in the US. And the reality is, is you know, there are only a few companies that make the equipment that's inside these. And um, you know, most of that's made in Mexico anyway, so. Let's be honest, Emerson Copeland, they ain't making squat in the US because they can pay the people eight, nine dollars a day in Mexico. And that lets the C-suite be the fat, happy pigs that they are screwing American workers day in and day out. All right, so I'm gonna cut this again on the backside just to, to simplify the handling of it. If you choose to do this, try not to cut up your unit, the paint on your unit. It ain't gonna make a big difference, but it's just better if you don't. And watch out for them copper staples. That's some nice big cardboard. So what do we got here? Wow, we got a full size unit. That's pretty cool. I've never seen a tall mini split condenser like this. Um, it's 166 pounds is what I understand. Oh, sweet. It even came with uh, 
nipples to braise on. Man, that solved another problem I, I, I was gonna have to deal with. So these are um, adapters to braise onto a conventional line set. So you braise these in in place and then it transitions to flare, which is what, it's gonna have a flare connection here, uh, I think. Or maybe it's down here. No, it's down here. Awesome. That make that easy. And it came with some anti-vibration pads. And uh, yeah, it should be. I'm I'm gonna put these somewhere else. Um, it's gonna look a little goofy sitting outside my house, um, but it'll be okay. It really will. It's not, you know, and honestly, if they'd offered a 19 or 21 sear, I would have paid for it. I would have paid an extra thousand dollars to get higher efficiency. So this one, oh, this one says it's an 18 sear. Hey, hey. Um, that's cool. I was expecting 16.9. So I'm actually really stoked about that. And, um, you know, that's probably another 10% efficiency, but I, I kid you not, I spend a hundred dollars a month on, on air conditioning and heating easy. So we gotta figure out how to get this down. I'm gonna leave it on the pallet. I think I know the answer to it, but I'm gonna mess with it in a minute. I'm gonna get the air handler out of the way. Uh, the air handler is not any lighter. Um, well, it said it's 166 pounds, but I assure you this is not 166 pounds. And it's not securely mounted to that pallet either. Well, that's interesting. And there's a piece of pallet missing, so mm, not a surprise. Well, let's see what we got. I don't think I can get this off. So I'm going to have to uh, do the same thing where I cut the box open. So I am going to video the entire process of replacing my HVAC unit. Now, I am going to give you some thoughts on this. If you're not qualified, you don't know what you're doing, go ahead and do it. But if you've got HVAC experience, you probably can do it. It's not that hard. Uh, you got to pay attention to details. You've got to make sure it is installed properly. because that'll determine how long your unit lasts. And there are some good HVAC contractors, but I'm gonna tell you nine out of 10 of them ain't worth a crap. And I refer to it as a, when I'm out doing inspections, has violations and concerns. That's what HVAC means to me, because most of the units I inspect have violations and concerns. Man, I, it's so unusual for me to get the really big pieces of cardboard like that. So it looks like the packaging did a great job. And there we have it. It's a nice little air handler and even included a little foam. Would you do some more foam? I'll save this and reuse it for shipping something else. Um, little bit of boo-boo down there. Um, some more adapters. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is. I'll get into that later. Kind of an expensive box. This foam stuff's not cheap. But I like it. It's, it's a nice, nice looking unit. Good squirrel cage fan. Uh, there's a mount for the 510 or 5 kilowatt heat strip. Um, it is wired a little bit weird compared to an American unit. Um, the 5 kilowatt heat strip has its own wiring. And then the fan and um, the internals are controlled by the outside unit. So it may require a double disconnect. I gotta look and see uh, what code says about that. Code says you're supposed to be able to turn off the power to work on it. And I'm not sure if having two separate circuits on one single piece of equipment actually meets code or not. 
but it'll work for me and I'm not real worried about it because I've never used my five kilowatt heat strip to begin with. And I will have to rotate this um, So I do have a little bit of, oh yeah, so that's that's fine. It's got a built-in filter. Um, so it's probably a washable filter if it's like every other mini split that I've ever owned. Hang on just one second, I'm gonna go get my dolly. All right, so I really need to know what's going on down here. So I'm gonna slide this over and then I'm gonna rotate it back. No big deal. That's a little bent right there. Um, it does come with a reusable filter, so that's awesome. Probably not a Merv whatever, but it, it actually will work. Nice, con nice coil. Um, and it's a magnetic catch. That's really, really neat. Yeah, it is a magnetic catch. Uh, let's see if it goes in like this. Nope. It does go in like this. So, uh, yeah, this, this side was the bent at the bottom, but it's really not a big deal. I'm going to leave it on this little cardboard skid. Um, I think they probably should have put some foam underneath this, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this don't matter. Um, it'll be just fine. Uh, coil's still pressurized. Uh, so, yeah, everything looks good there. I have to spin the coil around. Um guess we could get into that now, but I wasn't planning to. Actually, no, the coil does not need to be spun around. It's already set up for a left-hand flow. So it actually is ready to go the way it is. So I don't have to do anything to it. I, when I read the manual, um, I thought I was going to have to um, swap it around. I'm looking to see if they list the sear on here. So it, it shows a 4 amp power draw on here. And then what does this one show? This one shows a... 32 amp power draw. Oh wow, it calls for a 41 amp circuit. I don't have a 41 amp circuit there. <coughs> That's interesting. The specs do not match what uh, was advertised. Mm, whatever. I will deal with it. I'll have to rewire for that. So the fans are one ninth horsepower times two, and um, at any rate, I, I really that that does kind of annoy me because, like I said, the house is not wired for 50 amp, and I'm gonna have to look and see what kind of hell it'll be to restring a wire um, for a 50 amp circuit. That's that should be a number eight, and there is currently a 30 amp circuit there, which is not a number eight. Copper ain't cheap. That's, uh, you know, 
copper wire is expensive. But anyway, we knew there was going to be some remediation uh, that was needed when I put in the new AC unit. One of the things I would do differently when I built, rebuilt this house, I would have run conduit to that location, and I didn't. So now I'm going to have to run conduit on the outside because the wire is in the wall. And I would have run conduit to the thermostat in particular because I didn't think that went through. That's just... Now, you know what? I'm going to put this over here. Because that's how I'm going to get this down, is with the dolly. Um, maybe, maybe not. I might not need to. Yeah, I'm not going to need to. That pallet's not really, neither pallet is terribly well done. Um, it's okay. I will move it from the front on this side. And, you know, that's just kind of that. Now, what does it say what it weighs? Yeah, it probably does weigh 166 pounds. Um, originally, I was going to put this on the side of the house. I might still. I might still. We will figure that out. Um, I think it would be a better place for it up off the ground. Um, but if I do that, I'm already running one, I'm already running some conduit on the outside of the house for the air conditioner, so, um, we'll see. So, let me get this pallet and the trash out of here, I'll be right back. Alright, so, with it on a pallet, it's pretty easy for me to move it around, and... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to move it from that side. I'm going to move it from the other side so that if the... It's just... It's safer to move it from this side. Less chance of doing damage. Here we are. So let's see what's in this uh, heat strip box. Again, it's an awfully large box for what essentially is an electric heater. And no disappointments, it's an awfully large box. Looks like there's a disconnect and a label. So it's not completely unreasonable. Ooh, it might even be well packed. All right, we'll just pull it out like this. So you can see here they've completely encased it in blue foam. Um, that piece can go in the recycle box. And you know, it's just simple nichrome wiring. Nice unit. It was a hundred dollars or so. No big deal. So I'm going to set it back in here until it's time to try and get it out of there. Um, this will be going into the house, so there's no reason for it to stay out here. And then I'm going to figure out what this is. So I've got a little box in here about the size of a thermostat. 
Let's see what it is. It is a thermostat. It's a wired remote controller. So I will have to figure out what to do with this and if I'm going to let it replace my Honeywell thermostat that I really like. But it did come with a thermostat. That's, that's kind of nice. Uh, American manufacturer would never, ever in a million years have given you a free thermostat. So we'll have to see what that does and what its wiring requirements are. Um, I don't do much with the thermostat, so it may not be it may not be a big deal. But I'll have to look into this. Uh, in fact, I'll just take the the manual with me. So that's it for this video. That's the unboxing of the ACIQ three ton hybrid uh, central split system. Um, might as well take uh, the other thing. Um, overall, I'm really happy with it. I'm really impressed with it. I think it's going to do really well. It's going to lower my AC bill. I ran a quick calculation. The Good for Nothing Man system was rated as a 16 sear, and this is rated as an 18 sear. That should generate at least $71 a year in savings. Now, the reality is I don't think that Goodman has been running as a 16 sear for the last couple of years. Um, so that's another video. I'll do another video right after this that's going to talk about what's wrong with the Goodman and when you should replace your air conditioner versus repair it. And I think when I share the numbers, you're going to be like, wow, there's no question it's time for a new one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon so you find out when there's new videos.